Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox where I continue my development of a hypersonic liner and I think I might have a possible solution to my problem. Uh, one commenter noted that there was an update to Advanced Jet Engines uh, version 2.8 that made changes to the ramjets and of course I noted that I was having trouble with the ramjets, but other people were not having trouble with the ramjets. I thought it was because I needed a pre-cooler because it was overheating after the last session, but then people commenting on the video said that they weren't using a pre-cooler, so there had to be some other variable, and then it turns out that there had been this update. I don't usually update my mod. Once I get a good install of Realism Overhaul working, I only update the mod if there is a specific problem and look there's a specific problem so now I updated it I generally don't you know assume that it's the mod at fault I try to figure out what other problem what I might be doing wrong because usually it's something that I did wrong so uh, I wasn't jumping looking for an update to the mod immediately but it turns out that that might be the reason that I wasn't able to get beyond Mach 5 uh, it seems likely, but uh, I, I left it like this because you'll note after updating the mod, um, there's some interesting effects. First of all, the model of the ramjet's different here. Uh, it's got one of these nozzles now. It doesn't have the nozzle it had before. Actually, the model of the J58 is also different, uh, which is why it's sort of poking out there. You can see uh, right here it's poking. I, I definitely want two of those. Now people said they preferred the J58s on the outside with the shock cone intakes uh, for vibrational reasons I think. Uh, spinal cord injury and besides it's poking out over there so I probably want to move it anyway. So we'll, we'll put it outboard so that we don't have it poking out. Okay and now we have the ramjets in there. And they've obviously changed somehow, because the models have changed. I think I want to tuck this in a bit here. Uh, like so, just for aesthetic reasons. And let's make sure... Okay, well, these J58s are... Uh, well, hold on. Only one of them seems to be... That's weird. Okay. Uh, they are in symmetry. I want to have that be toggle engine. And then, for some reason, it un action group the CRJ, uh, CR2s, not CRJs, that's a plane. Okay, and so that's fine. And I'm going with the Peregrine 3 with the big wing, uh, long wing, just to see its performance. If it turns out that we have the required velocity, and I'll assess the drag situation, but the good thing about the big wing is, first of all, it takes off much smoother, and it also carries more fuel. You know, the fuel is being carried in the wing here. There's no fuel in the body right now, except for these conformal tanks, which are basically extensions of the wing. So keep that in mind. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll try the various versions of this with the smaller wing as well, and see the relative performance uh, before moving on, if we get beyond Mach 5. If we don't get beyond Mach 5, then I'll reassess. Okay, so let's save this version and try it out. Now, it's also a reasonable question what other things might have changed, like um, how much intake it might need for the ramjets, and we'll have to assess the temperature situation for the cooling. But here we go, let's get our autopilot module manager thing on standard fly-by-wire, and ignition. We'll uh, get a load of performance here. Okay, with this big wing we should be able to take off here. Yep. And also another thing to consider is if we can go back to using the lighter engines, you know, the F-15, F-16 engines instead of the SR-71 engines. If that's good enough, then that'll be a lighter load, uh, you know, less dry mass, which will extend our range. And since we're relying on the ramjets for velocity anyway, that might be a good idea. It is nice to see that the ramjets are not reading any throttle right now. Remember, in the previous version of Advanced Jet Engines, we saw 1% throttle there. And also, uh, they, they, they were visibly lit. And that was weird. Okay, we're still going up, still accelerating, and past Mach 4. 
with the J58s, honestly, um, unless the efficiency of the ramjets are pretty good now, it's not unreasonable to just use the J58s to cross the Atlantic. Okay, it looks like it's flattening out. Let's uh, ignite the uh, ramjets. Oh, that's a totally different sound. The ISP is better than I remember it, and the thrust is uh, looking good. The thrust on the J58s has already diminished quite substantially, and we are punching right through Mach 4.8. So yeah, it looks like it was just a mod update sort of situation. Let's turn off the jets now. We definitely don't need them to be operating at this time. Um, the estimated range is a little bit worrisome. Um, let's very gently coax this up to a higher altitude and hope that that helps. And again, it'll help because at a higher altitude we'll have less drag and everything. Now, the trick is, I really don't want to carry too much more fuel because the more fuel you carry, the more the cost per passenger is. So, yeah, obviously with this kind of thrust, uh, you know, we saw the angle at which we could climb at initially with the J-58s, we could carry more fuel, we could pack more fuel in. We've got these huge pods that are basically empty right now and could carry much more. But we don't want to because that means an increased cost per passenger. And so it's not as attractive and it'll end up with uh, even worse than the Concorde situation. We're pretty high up now. Drag is 107 kilonewtons. We're at nearly 35 kilometers. Let me see what kind of performance we get after throttling down with the ramjets. Well, we're doing down a little bit too fast, though. I wanted to see the level flight situation. It's a tough balance between, you know, trying to seek less drag higher up and getting the better specific impulse with the uh, higher flow of air into the engines. We're gonna see what thrust setting can get us to Mach 5. How's the... well... Um, prop requirements med still says 0% though. Uh, but I, I believe we're okay. Otherwise, uh, well, one thing we would see is an imbalance between the two ramjets if there was if one was starved of fuel, uh, starved of air, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Well, it looks like we can hold level with higher than Mach 5. Let me throttle down a bit. But maybe throttling down is not the optimal with this. So we're close to being level at 26,700. And we can actually reduce that a little bit, pitch up a little bit there. It looks like we can go Mach 5.4 at 55% throttle. Fuel flow is 6 kilograms per second. Um, as far as liters is concerned, 14 per second. Let me just manually do the math on that since I'm not entirely sure it is telling the truth over here. Well, uh, by my calculations, it's 12.9 minutes, which, uh, to this thing's credit, I think is 0.23 hours. We are currently here, 15 minutes into the flight. Let me take a look at the fuel consumption up there, depending on our throttle setting. Well, it seems pretty proportional. No big surprises, it's not like the top end consumes way more than the bottom end. That's a 50% throttle, and looks like we could probably maintain Mach 5.5 there. I mean, the question I have to ask myself is, would this all be much more efficient with just the J58s? Okay, our total... Uh, Fuel load is 22,279 liters of fuel, of kerosene, but we'll, we'll assume jet fuel. And that's 5,500, uh, sorry, 5,885 gallons. So, let me just calculate 
uh, price of jet fuel. Let's see how much it is. It says it's um, for corporate jets five dollars and twenty one cents per gallon. So five five uh, five eight eight five times five dollars and twenty one cents means that the entire fuel tank here costs uh, thirty thousand six hundred and sixty dollars but that's uh, based on the price in 2008 but then fuel prices have only really gone down since then I think that was close to the peak I think uh, it's yeah it's actually cheaper now I think um, looking at more recent uh, prices it's more like three dollars so let's go with that uh, let's say 350 to give it some margin so then it's a twenty thousand dollar six uh, twenty thousand six hundred dollar tank and we're dividing that between sixteen passengers so the cost of this flight uh, however far it gets will be a thousand three hundred dollars just for the fuel and it does not look like it's going to get where we want it to go but maybe I should have just kept the J58s on let's see what happens when I reactivate the J58s now Well, it just says flame out, air combustion failed. So I don't think they can work past past Mach four, uh, five point four. That's good. <laughs> I'd be worried if they could. Okay. Well, it's pretty clear we're not going to get to where we want to go. Let's see the version with the smaller wing here right now. Let's get some numbers here. We're at Mach uh, five point three, and for some reason decreasing, which is not what I would expect. Uh, we're, we're not going up that fast and we're getting lighter so it's unusual that given that we're not going up much that as we get lighter our velocity would be going down so that's curious but anyway let's try the shorter wing version and see how that compares this is 178 kilonewtons of drag and drag is decreasing okay let's see Alright, so this is the Peregrine 6 with the more SR-71 style wing and a much more obvious delta shape. And so, throttle up and everything is set to go. Let's uh, make sure, oh wait, yeah, let's make sure that these engines go first and are not at the same time as the ramjets. Though I could use action groups to shut off the ramjets if necessary. Here we go. And break off. Uh, I had to put the brakes on because it bounced initially when loading the craft onto the runway. Oh boy. A little bit of wiggliness. Uh, can we get off the ground, please? Oh, okay. That was not great, but oh, keep going, keep going. Honestly, though, at this level, the fuel consumption of the J-58 is not great either. I mean, 18 per second is more than we, what we were seeing from the ramjets. So there is that. I'm gonna try them out at uh, 20 kilometers first and then steadily go up. And we're going to throttle down so that the J-58s continue functioning. But still, they're consuming 15 per second already. It's not very helpful. Alright, let's try the ramjets. Thirty-four altogether. But let's throw down to get just above Mach 5 kind of thing. I don't know. Let's take a look at what our estimated range does. Looks like we have no choice but to go higher. Uh, let's see what happens at 30 kilometers. Well, uh, past 30, it looks like 30 is a hard line for the J58. So let's get under it actually, just a little bit, because the J58s do have that specific impulse of 4,000. Fuel consumption right now is only six, seven per second, but we're not quite at Mach 5 yet. That sort of dependence on the amount of thrust that the ramjets are providing. Seem to be a 
very sharp drop in estimated endurance. Up, oh, we just lost the turbo jets again because. And yeah, estimated range really goes down when we lose them. Looks like uh, Mach 5.03 is where we lose them. So we're getting a sense of where we can keep the turbo jets running if we want to. And that's under 30 kilometers, just under 30 kilometers, going at Mach 5.03. I guess at this point I'll take a look at the comments regarding the flight profiles. So Max Fuel said that uh, activated the J2s at Mach 2, climbed through 25 kilometers, leveling off at 25 kilometers, deactivating the J58s at Mach 4, and then cruising at Mach 6. Uh, in a following uh, message, there was a range of 3,200 kilometers at 35 kilometers altitude at Mach 6.3, range at 2,000 kilometers at 25 kilometer altitude at Mach 7. So uh, if we want to push the high Mach numbers, it looks like lower is better on the altitude, but the uh, range suffers. And that is without the J58s. I don't know, I mean, I, I like that we're getting some thrust for a higher ISP here. But whether that's a good idea or a bad idea, I don't know. It seems like it would make for a better balance, or maybe the specific impulse is suffering on the ramjets. They'd get a better specific impulse if they had all the air. So uh, it might net net to be no benefit at all to keep the J58s running. Range wise, his numbers seem to match what uh, I've been looking at. Uh, obviously, if we go faster, we'd have better range. Throttling down, I don't know if it's providing enough benefit. I'll have to work out the math off to the side. Um, so, uh, of course, I'm recording this for YouTube, which means I'm getting all the numbers here for myself, so I can just look at the video and see what the numbers were and, you know, calculate out the curves and see where they cross. There is the option of a rapier, and but that's not technology that's ready yet, though it's, it's a possibility. You know, ramjets exist, you know, and uh, obviously the SR-71 engines exist. I'm just hoping for modifications to them to make them suitable for civilian use with uh, more modern building techniques, you know, 3D software, and also um, materials. Well, we have uh, longer endurance, but not longer range right now. We ended up over here and we're still not going to make it across there. Let's just uh, push it high and fast and see what happens like that. So, I'm going to turn off the J58s, go full throttle, and let's see how high we can get actually. Hmm, interesting, our fuel consumption is only 6 per second right now, but it's not really bringing us to high Mach number right here. Maybe the angle of attack is causing us a little bit too much drag. It seems like our drag is only 64 whereas the thrust is, uh, you know, for two ramjets that's 84. So we should be, but the drag is increasing tremendously now. I guess we might have to go past Mach 5 before going up again. We do have the engine warnings, but obviously we are not being prevented from going beyond Mach 4.9 as we were in the previous video. But perhaps pre-coolers would make things more efficient, so that's the next thing I'm going to try. We've got some space here, you can see uh, we could probably add a pre-cooler there and then the engines would just end up over here and that'd be a good place for them to be anyway. Overall, I don't think we've uh, gotten too much better performance out of this wing shape in terms of drag. Maybe a little bit, but it's certainly not a game changer as far as getting us to where we want to go. 
another option. If uh, the pre-coolers don't help, uh, we can see how this is fully loaded. But again, that increases the cost. Right now, we're going with $1,300 per passenger. It doesn't look particularly good as we get faster. The thrust goes up, which means uh, the endurance goes down, and the specific impulse is going down. Ah, interesting. The ramjets just exploded. At Mach 6.3 to 4. Alright. Well, I guess that gives me my answer as far as how fast we can push this. Okay, uh, back to the VAB, and let's see if we can push it harder with the pre-coolers. Alright, it's probably the case that we should tuck those pre-coolers in a little bit more. They're poking out just a bit. But uh, they weigh 0.15 tons a piece, and we've removed the other intakes on top because they provide some intake air, uh, more than those divertless inlets do. Uh, but we'll have to see whether it's a net benefit. Those didn't weigh very much. Those are only 0.02, I think, something like that. Okay, and once again, I don't want all the... Well, let's just uh, use the action groups to ignite the engines. And again, we had a bounce earlier, so that's why I've got the brakes on there. Really high velocity to take off with this thing, though. It's basically about 250 miles an hour. So after this, another option is to use a thinner body. That's obviously a thing we need to look at. And reduce drag various ways. Let's take a look at the range as our J58s increase our velocity. And check out where they peak. I need to flatten out to make that worthwhile though. And even though we're slightly going up now, I think it's decreasing. So optimal was 2 points, Mach 2.7. I think it probably says that in the description, but this definitely bears that out. But let's see how much it drops if we go from Mach 2.7 all the way up to Mach 4. It seemed like 5,700 kilometers when we were at Mach 2.7. Okay, we are now past Mach 4, and it seems like it results in a loss of about 350 kilometers of range. So not that bad to uh, go faster with these. But let's kick in the ramjets now. We are at Mach 4.5 descending, though. Let's try and level out at 27 kilometers. Estimated range is at 4,500 which is interesting. Well, that would explain it. We're only running on one ramjet. Huh. Well, that would explain why the range is pretty darn good, huh? But still, we've got uh, engine overheating indicator with the with the pre-coolers. So that's troublesome. Well, here, let's try and keep the jets on for a bit. Let's see what it takes to get to Mach 5. Oh, wait. They cut out a little bit earlier this time, didn't they? They uh, cut out at 28 kilometers and less than Mach 5. So maybe these uh, pre-coolers, they're not giving us as much air as I would have hoped. First of all, they don't indicate an area. They do in indicate a flow. This uh, they indicate a flow of about a tenth of what the shotgun intakes do, which is not worse than what the divertless intakes were doing. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if with, with more air, the jets would last longer. Anyway, let's definitively shut off the turbo jets. Well, those should indicate off, right? Alright, our other question was whether we would be capable of going faster than the Mach 6.3 or so where the ramjets exploded. 
So, let's pour it on. Well, they are overheating by the look of it. But, if I recall, um, the comments said that they were able to go past Mach 7 at a lower altitude. So it's mainly because we were going pretty high that they are not able to maintain high Mach number. Oh, other things are breaking off now. What, uh, what was that? Oh, strut connectors. Oh, those are uh, to support these wing pods. Okay, so those go at about that point. Well, we're at uh, 24 kilometers and Mach 7.3. Okay, so... Oh! Hmm... I think it's safe to say that at uh, 24 kilometers, Mach 7.3 is the highest feasible velocity for this airframe. What actually exploded? Uh, well, the crew... Uh, the, oh, the little uh, Mark II crew cabins. And then various joints from all the stress after that. Once you lose one of the main body parts, of course, everything is just going to rip apart. Okay, so aerodynamic stresses Mach 7.3, 24 kilometers. So noted. All right. Mm, I don't think we had any benefit at all from the pre-coolers. So that's a thing to note. Let me go back to the SPH and see what other refining we might want to do. Okay, for the final test for now, I've replaced the engines with two rapier engines just to see how that works out. I have no idea. The catch with these rapiers is that they use liquid methane, not kerosene, and that takes a little bit more volume. And so instead of uh, just having the wings filled and these conformal tanks filled, we also now have uh, these, this area filled as well. Uh, we're not planning on using rocket mode, otherwise I'd be packing some liquid oxygen as well. So it's just straight liquid methane and we'll see how far we get with air breathing mode with the rapiers. But we are benefiting from the fact that we've dumped the ramjets entirely, so that's a positive. And of course the pre-coolers as well, this uh, awkward hole there, but uh, we can patch it up any number of ways. I made sure that our vessel mass to begin with is about the same as the other peregrines uh, so that we have some basis to compare with and uh, autopilot module manager you can see the plane is askew because of the initial bounce that's why okay mm, oh boy uh, we may have to go off the runway here Okay, we're taxiing back onto the runway. This is awkward. And we're gonna totally cross the runway. Great. Uh, Alright, let's go. Oh, ow, ow. Okay, fine, fine. I keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Alright, jeez. Interestingly, these engines also say prop requirement met 0%. The reason why I didn't pick the rapiers to begin with is you note the specific impulse right at the start here. And the SR-71 engines start off with 4,000. So we're already consuming a lot more fuel than we would like. I will have to calculate what the cost of liquid methane would be. Uh, it's not so easy to pin down a number for how much this particular configuration would cost. Now if you're wondering why I didn't put four of these rapiers, it's because uh, that's added mass. They're each two tons. and it'll be a little bit more than the SR-71 ramjet combination because the ramjets are pretty light. Okay, well, I think we need to take a plunge to force some more air into this situation and hopefully get beyond Mach 3. I think these engines operate better around Mach 3, if I recall correctly. Let me check out the... Oh, are they balanced? Oh, they seem to be balanced. I was worried about the air, especially since it seems like we're 
definitely outstripping drag and so there's no good reason for it to have slow acceleration okay I think uh, we're more in the sweet spot now you can see the Mach number going up quickly and even if we go up I think it'll continue yes uh, look at the liquid methane go though now it's difficult to compare because of its different density from kerosene. Oh, by the way, uh, somebody had asked why I was using kerosene instead of uh, like ab gas or jet fuel, uh, or the specific kind of jet fuel that the SR-71 used in particular. And that's because the density of kerosene and that kind of jet fuel is basically the same. And uh, as far as real fuels goes, um, everything else except for the density and the specific heat is coated into the jet engine and not the fuel so it doesn't make sense to have a duplicate fuel basically but that's a decision uh, advanced jet engine made uh, not a decision I made okay well uh, let's see if we can get some better range here we can see Mach 4.6 and increasing so no problems with the speed and the range is going up but we've used like half of our fuel already so we probably should have uh, tried to get to high Mach numbers earlier now again we're using all the available space for fuel well except for this tail bit here right now so without changing the shape of this we're not gonna pack too much more fuel in but it's looking okay. Well, we're going down now. That would be a little bit wrong. Probably a few flights will be necessary for me to decide whether we're at a good altitude for this or not. But we are past Mach 5 and going up, so I feel like throttling down is advisable. The angle of attack necessary here is nice. It's, it seems like it's better than the other configuration. Well, this is going to require some more testing. Obviously, fuel consumption is a worry, but maybe if I could get to the right velocity quicker, we could have had a better range from this. Would the range go up if I tried to push it to full throttle? I mean. I'm trusting this right now, but I'm not entirely sure it's telling me the truth. I'd have to calculate manually. And there's also a question about whether it's worthwhile to go higher. Right now, the specific impulse is going up as we go up, so that's good. Maybe we should... No, now it's going down a bit. It looks like 26.5 was sort of a sweet spot there. Somebody in the comments had said that the rapiers could do Mach 5.5 and it looks like that's the case uh, the question is whether it's going to have the range but at least it's competitive we can definitely say it's competitive well up here it's a little bit more pressed for lift okay adding those two numbers up about 3800 kilometers let's um, reduce throttle and see what happens let's say we just need to go to Mach 5 well, it looks like we'll need more than 81% throttle to keep Mach 5 here. And I don't think we've really improved our... our range by throttling down. I had said this, like 3,800 before, and it's basically 3,800 kilometers right now as well. Okay, well, it's an interesting balance. We're Clearly, we now have the speed. We've got the speed down. We've solved that problem. Now it's a question of range. And so, and part of that is going to be drag, and we'll have to just see. Uh, we want to keep those costs down, so that's the trick. Anyway, so this is where I'm at. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.